Hey everyone, welcome to Speedway Motors Tech Talk. My name is Joe. Josh is here today and he's gonna help us do some cut to fit axles in this nine inch housing. Now doing these axles, it's not as simple as saying, well, I've got a X length housing, so I need a Y length axle. It, it's not that easy. Different center sections, different carriers have different, different specs, different measurements. So we always like to measure before we cut an axle or even before we order an axle, kind of assemble the, the housing to this point and then take a measurement. And we're gonna show you how to do that. The first thing to figure out is which axle goes on which side, obviously. Short one goes typically on left the side. driver's side, and that's because your ring gear runs on the left side of the third member. So the ring gear's right in this, and you can see from the bulge on the back of the axle and everything that the ring gear rides on that side, which offsets your differential a little bit more to the driver's side. Putting your pinion offset to the right, which is basically the center of the housing, center of your trans tunnel and everything. You can feel that this, it goes in and it stops. There's like a pin in the middle of that, that carrier that, that stops it. And you don't necessarily want it shoved right up against that pin. So kind of the way that we do this, and there's lots of different ways of doing this. There's lots of ways that are right. You can stick a tape measure in there until you feel that pin and then measure out to the, the bearing. Um, the, the way that we like to do it is to, to install the axle to where it's bumped up against that pin. And then we're gonna measure out from the, the face here on the housing where the backing plate would bolt up to the face that's gonna be retained by the, the clamp that's gonna hold the, the bearing and the seal in. And what that's gonna do is that's actually gonna give us a measurement that's like a 16th of an inch too long. Basically the thickness of a backing plate is what this, this seal will, will protrude from the end. And so that will pull that splined end of that axle away from that pin slightly, you know, a 16th of an inch or so. And it'll allow, because this is a dynamic thing, you know, as you accelerate and decelerate, the axle twists and length, lengths change. And so it allows there to be some movement without it button up against that pin. And you see we've got just, just shy of an inch and a half, 145. So we'll then translate that measurement to the end of the axle. Uh, tolerance isn't like super duper critical here. You know, we're measuring it here with the calipers, but then we're marking it with a Sharpie. After our, we do our cut and put it in there, we'll verify that there is proper clearance. Right. So, you know, if we end up being a little bit too long, we'd also have to come back and right. do a second right. cut. Yeah, don't this, just... this should get us within the ballpark of being where we need to be. We have our axles cut. You know, we used a horizontal bandsaw. That might not be a tool that you have in your garage. I mean, really anything's gonna work. A chop saw, uh, you know, you could even, I suppose, use a cutoff wheel on your angle grinder if you had to. Just at the end, you know, grind it and kind of kind of square it up, make sure that it's flush. That'll also be something that you could mark and take to the local machine shop and they could do it for you too. Uh, we put a little bit of a lead in on the end of the splines and then filed the burrs off to make sure that it'll go in clean. And uh, now we're ready to check and, and kind of verify our length, make sure we make sure we did it right. Feel the bearing seat against the race, and then there will be just a little press on that seal when we put the clamp on. This ring comes with uh, our disc brake kits, and what it really what it's meant to do is sort of take the place of the backing plate that's not there for your for your drum brakes. And so when we were talking about the axle the seal surface protruding a little bit, you know, it'll come out just about the thickness of that, um, the thickness of this spacer. And then, there, that. So I feel the bearing seat, the bearing seats, but not, we're not hitting in the middle, so that, that means that we're, our length is good. And then this is gonna take, the, take up some of that space, and then the rest of that is gonna, is gonna press when we put the, the plate on and tighten it down to clamp it. Everything is good. Um, we're gonna put our clamping plates on now with our T-bolts and tighten them down and then we'll be ready to move on. All right, we tightened our clamps down. You know, we felt it seat the bearing and not bottom out on the pin in the center section so we know our axle lengths are correct. And again, this is just one way to do it. You know, it's kind of easy when you already have the axles and you can measure like we did. If you have the housing and need to order axles, you know, you can just stick a tape in there, feel, feel it bottom against the pin, measure out to the bearing surface and sort of extrapolate your axle length from there. Any questions at all with any of this, feel free to give us a call and thanks for watching.